Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithms. So this session I shall be explaining you about the analysis framework, the order of growth. Basically in this session, you should know the importance here to determine the runtime complexity of an algorithm and on what factors it is depending on. Suppose if there is one particular task for which we are asked to write the algorithm, I am writing one algorithm, that means I am using my own logic. If you are writing an algorithm for that same task, but after execution it is found that your algorithm is taking less amount of time in completing its job and my algorithm is taking more time in execution. So what can be the reason? Immediately we assume yes, maybe I, my algorithm is not efficient or I am not using an efficient logic here. So that's why it's taking more time and your algorithm is more efficient. This is how we think. But now let us assume that whatever steps you have written or I have written, both our steps are same. We are following the same logic, equal number of steps, everything is same dicto. But still if there is a variation in the running time of both of our algorithms, then what can be the reason? So the reason is you are running on a different machine, I am running on a different machine. The configuration in my machine is different, the configuration in your machine is different. Basically it, it might be the case that you are having a high end processor, I am not having a high end processor in my machine. Or you may be having 8 GB RAM, I am having just 4 GB RAM. Or your machine is having a different compiler and my machine is having a different compiler. So these are the factors that are affecting the running time of an algorithm. And what are the units to measure the running time? The time itself, all of us know that we always measure time in seconds, milliseconds, hours, minutes. So in here also, in the algorithm, when we try to execute an algorithm, we have to see how much time it is taking to complete its execution. So now here, since we in our machines, we have different configurations, we cannot use the time. We cannot use the second millisecond as the unit of time because these factors are affecting the same steps, the same algorithm, the same logic. If it is giving for you 5 milliseconds, for me it is 7 milliseconds. The difference is because the configurations in our machines are different. Even sometimes, let us assume all configurations are also same, steps are same, logic is same. Even then if there is a variation in the running time of an algorithm, there can be one more factor. What is that factor? In your system, okay, the, whatever algorithm you are executing, that is the only algorithm present. And CPU is concentrating only to that algorithm and it executes immediately. Assume that in my machine, there are 20 programs then the one which has to get executed has to be picked from those 20. There should be some scheduling algorithm which is going to schedule that process. So the time taken to carry out this scheduling may also affect the running time of my algorithm. So that's how now since all these factors are making the running time different for both of our algorithms, that's the reason we have to go for a metric which is independent of all these external factors. That's why we can come up with a metric, with a procedure which is going to give you the same running time when executed in any of the machines. That is basically we have to count the number of steps that are there okay, in each of the algorithm and how much time each step in the algorithm takes in order to complete its job. And that particular running time you will be representing with a function. So in general, we call it as order of that function, whatever you get to the running time. It can be n, n square, it can be log n, it can be root n, it, it can be n square, n cube, n cube. So that is called as the different functions. That is the running time which you get for various algorithms. And also to compare these running times with the order of growth because we are representing the running time of an algorithm with order O here followed by what? The function which you get, it can be n, it can be n square, it can be n cube, it can be 2 to the power of n like this. Now to compare this growth, okay, we have this particular relation. So we call this as the order of growth. The order of growth is starts in this manner. So 1 is there, which is what? It takes minimum amount for an algorithm to complete its job, to get executed. Then you have log to the base 2 n, followed by root n then n, n log to the base 2 n, n square n cube n to the power of 4 like this up to 2 to the power of n, then 2 to the power of n, after that you may have 3 to the power of n, 4 to the power of n, then uh, till n to the power of n, finally n factor a. And moreover you should know that what is the definition for the time complexity and what is the definition for the space complexity. These are the two important things in this particular subject 
analysis and design of algorithms. So how do you define time complexity? It refers or indicates how fast an algorithm runs. Basically what the time taken by an algorithm to complete its execution is called as the time complexity. Space complexity refers to the amount of memory units required by the algorithm in addition to the space needed for its input and output. So how much space it is occupying in the memory basically. The steps in the algorithm definitely needs some space in the memory apart from what the space that is needed to give the input values and to display the output values.